I'm very excited to use this someday. Just, just listen to this. Hang on. Hang on, I, I, it, it works, I promise. When a film photographer hits the thrift store, you never know what's gonna happen. This is a Kodak Brownie Movie Camera 2 from the 50s or 60s. To use this, you aim through this little peephole and line it up to these lines up in front and just press this button and it starts making a really cool noise. This camera shoots eight millimeter film, which is barely, barely made anymore. You put the new film up here, spool it through, and it wraps around this. And when you're done shooting it, you flip it over. You take this out and put it here, and you just record again because the film has an emulsion on both sides. It is a little bit pricey, so I'd be looking at like 110 to $125 just to get like an HD video made out of anything I shoot and it would be about four minutes of video. So I, I'm thinking about maybe using this through the summer and just documenting little moments and making like a video at the end of my experience shooting Super 8. And uh, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see. I'd love to hear what you guys think about that. Hey guys, welcome back to a YouTube video. Today we were supposed to be in Holland taking pictures of the Tulip Festival. <sighs> the tulips died. It got really, really, really cold and they all died. So in spite of that, we are going to be revisiting a roll of Fuji Pro 400H I shot in Holland back in late 2019. I'm also going to be showing you a little bit of my scanning process. Now I miss this film, it's pretty cool. I only ever shot one roll of Fuji Pro 400H, but I kind of liked it and I'm really just salty I, I didn't have any more. Um, getting back into film, I found a bunch of gold and Ultramax in my closet, and that was about it. And it's like, come on, come on, why didn't I have some Pro 400H saved away? This was back when I was buying three packs of Fuji Superior for $15 or less online. Anyways, enough of a sob story, let's get to the next one and start scanning. Like I mentioned, all of these photos were taken in 2019, which means I was still rocking my Canon EF. That's not, not AE-1, it's the EF, which was like the Japanese version. I don't know, it broke recently when I was filming my Ultramax project, and I bought a Canon AE-1. Everything was shot on this Canon FD 50mm lens that goes down to 1.8. Ouch, that really hurt my hand. <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if you can actually tell what's going on here, but I'm scanning the film backwards because that uh, allegedly makes it a little bit sharper. I have actually noticed that is kind of true, but I'm still new to this. Honestly, the part about home scanning that takes the longest is cropping images before generating positives. Usually the scans take me like two to three minutes. That's assuming that I have an uncut negative roll. These are the settings I used in Negative Lab Pro. I used the green shadow scanner thing to get a little bit more green out of this film stock just because it is a Fuji film and we do believe in keeping tradition alive around here. I mean, well, it, it just looks sick, okay? In overcast conditions, you get a lot of good color saturation with this film. There's a lot of latitude here. Like you see how dark the shadows are, but there's still information there, but those highlights aren't like blown out or affecting the image negatively. One thing I really miss about Fuji 400, now that I've had a chance to actually home scan it and everything, is the film borders. Look at how pretty they are. Compared to something like Kodak Gold, it's no contest. We're skipping ahead a little bit here, but, but well, Kodak's been slacking and down on its luck. Fuji's been hitting the gym, eating right, robbing orphanages, focusing on himself, and becoming the ultimate film stock that nobody can actually enjoy because they discontinued it because they hate letting us have fun. On a real note, I see some of myself in Fuji Pro 400H, so that's actually probably why they got rid of it just because they hate me. Sorry guys, Fujifilm are ops for real. All right, back to it. Speaking of Kodak Gold, these images have some pretty warm tones to them. At nighttime, you see a little bit more of that green coming through, and especially in the outdoors, uh, obviously. This is what I looked like back in 2019, by the way, before the depression got me when they discontinued 
Fuji Pro 400H. This shot was actually my friend's profile picture for a little bit. In brighter conditions and even at sunset, this film did a really, 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 really good job of staying balanced when exposed properly. I, I mean, some of these shots look painterly. It's a huge shame that this film was discontinued. What makes things worse is that people are selling it on eBay. There's a few listings where you could get one roll for like 40 bucks after shipping, but you have to drop almost $900 just to get 10 rolls of questionably stored film mailed from Japan. It's literally cheaper for employees in Japan to steal expired Fuji industrial film stocks and sell it on eBay, mailing it to the United States market than it is to actually shoot Fuji Pro 400H. Hey, by the way, if you're still watching this video, please leave a like, it does help. And I just, I love seeing when people like the video cause it like tells me that you like it and it just makes me happy. Um, also, if you're new or you have just been coming back again and again to hate, um, please at least subscribe. It's a huge shame. I shot one roll of this film, but in, in, in so many situations, and it genuinely feels like it was a beautiful off the shelf, um, everyday film. Like it, it just performed well in every single situation, except, you know, that nighttime, those little shots I did, and obviously a tripod and a longer exposure time would have made it better. Assuming it was priced right, I, I could have seen myself shooting the heck out of Fuji Pro 400H back in the day. Literally the only complaint I have is that you can't get it anymore. <sighs> this really sucks. I like, this is painful. The next real YouTube photo vlog that I'm going to be posting is going to be from the Detroit Eastern Market uh, Flower Day this upcoming weekend. You'll probably see that in a couple weeks after it's edited and posted. And then also the Aurora Borealis, the good old fashioned Northern Lights have been visible. I actually got a chance to test out some time lapses last night with my digital camera. It was pretty sick. So I'm hoping to get out there again today and maybe shoot some Portrait 800 um, if the clouds go away. So look out for those videos.